too short. No, too short. Too short. Too long. Ugh. Ah, why do I never have the right size? All right, everybody, thanks for joining me again on my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Otherwise, for returning subscribers, welcome back. So what are we working on today? I am going to show you guys how we build extensions. If you ever get tired of, let me show you, multiple length extensions. So you have to buy these things on fixed lengths, whether you get them from Amazon, Horizon Hobbies, Tower Hobbies, Motion RC, vendors off of eBay, wherever you decide to get your extensions, you are stuck with whatever they have. And a lot of times what we wind up doing is it's too long, but it works. So we bundle them up in a corner or they rub on something or they're a little bit too short and too tight and wind up pulling apart. There's an alternative. So I've purchased the kit through Hanson Hobbies a while ago and I make my own extensions. So I will put down in the link below in the description a link to their website. This is the deluxe kit and I will show you what's in the inside of it. It comes with some 22 gauge Futaba colored wire, some 24 gauge, which is remember the higher the number is the smaller the wire. So technically less current and it comes with all of your fittings and ends to make whatever length servo needs, whatever servo extension needs that you have, you can make them whatever length you want. Something else that I'm going to show you, I use what we call twisted pair wire. Now this is 22 gauge twisted pair. Why do we go with twisted pair wire over regular straight run? There's an advantage to it, and one of the advantages to twisted pair wire is any wire that flows current will create an electromagnetic field around it, which can actually in, in, uh, induce interference in other electronic devices near it. And the longer the run, the, the bigger the chance for that. Although the chance is small, we still can take advantage of twisted pair. A lot of automotive applications use them, especially along CAN networks, LIN bus networks, CAN2 networks, anything with communication because they don't want any interference on very low voltage signals. So we are actually using, this is 22, so it's a little thicker gauge than the standard. But the advantage here is you can make them literally whatever length you want. And one of the other nice things if you've ever run into it, if you have two different ends coming out of your wing, one for the ailerons, one for the flaps, you can put a red one coming out of the wing and a matching corresponding red one coming out of the fuselage. You can have blue, if you like a blue and a blue, you can use a red and a red and a green. So you can literally make any combination here that you want of these wires. On my application here, my issue is that I have three completely different length servo leads. So I will have something coming off the aileron, something off the flap, and something off of the gear. So I don't want, on both sides here, I don't want six extensions. I don't want six extensions sticking out of there, and every time I hook up my wing, I have to hook up, check that out, electric fly swatter from that's from Harbor Freight. Those things are awesome. If you don't have one, pick one of them things up too. They're great. Very amusing. So I don't want six extensions sticking out of there. So what I am doing is I am making polarized connectors. So a polarized connector, if you can see that is also sold by the same group. So you can have this all coming in and look at how they're different leads, uh, different length leads. So literally as I plug those in, right there. They will all be nice and tucked into the side, as much wire as I need, no extra waste, nothing bundled up. 
um, the current capacity that I want the whole nine yards. And with polarized connectors, this will be same as I will outfit this from here over to the receiver and I will make ends for there. But when you go to plug it in, that's all you have on that side. Now I will have one of these made for each. So I will have still two connectors, but I'll just do something to mark that one. But having two is going to be a lot better than having six. So as you can see, I've made three there and I have a corresponding two over here and I have this last one. I am going to show you guys how we go ahead and make our leads and it's very simple. I thought for the longest time there's no way I can make leads because I didn't trust them. Um, you don't want a, a failure in flight or anything like that. I have a tip. It'll be at the end how you actually can go about testing these things so you know. So stick around for that. Let's get back to how to put these pins on. So I am going to put this here. I hope you guys can see it. Get the camera adjusted. And what you want to do, he also sells what they call straight snip pliers, cutters. These things are great. They are not like a regular pair of diagonals. They cut everything off pretty nice and flush. You don't have the angles of the insulation being cut. Again, this is 22. So I'm going to separate these. I am going to take my snippers and I am going to go about probably, I don't know, an eighth of an inch in the 22 and just give it a squeeze go to the red about an eighth of an inch give it a squeeze and finally get the last one in here and give it a squeeze and when you first get started making these things you're going to mess up one or two but these things are so cheap it's ridiculous you do not want to hold them with the pliers and pull it don't do that. You're going to wind up ripping some of the wires out. Just squeeze and pull the insulation off with your fingers like I showed you. So we are going to use this end. We are going to preload it. And my crimper, so you make it flush with that end there. Pick whatever color you want for now. We'll do the orange. Slide it in the back side and watch it here to make sure that it comes all the way up into the cavity. Once it's there, nice steady pressure to crimp. And that one's done. And you can see how it grabbed. I hope you can see that. You can see how it grabbed the insulation here, squeezed on the wire. And yes, if you wanted to, you could actually solder these on the end if you really wanted to for peace of mind. But these things are so good. So preload, grab my next wire, give it a little twist there to fine tune it. Slide it in the back, make sure it comes all the way through into the cavity on the other side. Nice steady crimp. Pluck it out. Again, another nice easy wire. The brown one, give a twist. Here. Fish it in the back. Make sure it goes off into that socket. Nice steady pressure. And there you go. Now, we are going to go ahead and plug that in to the cavity. So we are making these ends, right? And this is probably the thing that takes the longest. So here's a tip for you. When you're not sure how these things go together, use an extension that you already have and look at, look at the wiring and the way that the pattern is on there. And then as you're making these things, you can just, you'll make more that match. So 
so with twisted pair wire again nice part is it's cutting down interference is it a huge issue no but we'll all take any little advantage that we can make sure this is the way i want it and we are going to go there the little tab goes up to lock you'll feel a little click red goes into the center you'll feel a click signal goes into click and then this thing is going to be our housing and you can look way down in the inside you see those little tabbies down in there the short end of the tabbies go over the top as you're locked and you'll just push that over until it clicks and it locks on and there you can see that we will have let me clean these up and throw them back in the right bins. And now you will see that we have two nice, what they call polarized connectors. So these will be from the wings. And I will fish them down through the top to the corresponding plugs on the inside. So they are exactly as long as I need them to be and no extra waste. No opportunities to get them caught on things, caught in linkages, rub in areas that they shouldn't. And again, we don't trust things we can't see, so I will put safety locks over those connectors so they don't come apart. So let me show you guys the trick now for testing. All right, so now it's tip time. How do we test our servo leads, our extensions that we just made? If you wanna make sure that things are done right, you can actually plug each end of the extension in with itself. So one of the mistakes people make are putting the leads reversed on each side. So literally you should be able to plug any of your extensions in with each other, make sure the pin fit is nice, and then actually look at the color of the leads and make sure that they match up. So that's step number one, all right? Once that's done, now, da -da -dum, here it is. $5 servo tester off of Amazon. Cycler, servo tester, neutral finder, these things are fantastic for what they cost next to nothing. You plug in a battery on one side, you have a select button, power here, you put in your extension, and then a servo. And we are going to go ahead and start this thing. There's neutral, there's automatic, you can go back to manual. And this little knob thing adjusts it, which is really cool. Again, neutral. So when you set up planes, you can actually set them all up with neutral and you don't need your radio or receiver programmed. Now we're gonna go to cycle. And we're actually gonna let this thing sit here and cycle. And you're gonna take your extension that you just made and every one of them you can test. So we're gonna sit here and we're gonna do a little bit of wiggle, pull, twist, some tension. Sorry, pulled that apart. All right. And you can basically give these things a tensile test, if you will, tensile strength test. Give that a pull and a wiggle. And you're just listening and watching for the servo to glitch or anything there. And you can have faith in your extensions that you actually made these things right. You have no problems. Everything is, is good. So you can actually let that thing sit there and cycle. Again, here's the top of our kit. I ordered some different colors and stuff with the kit, but you have male and female plugs. I got those ones that I was just telling you about, the polarized connectors. And these things all come in groups of three. So you would get these things with either six, nine, or 12, and they would come off with um, one, or I guess two, or three, or four leads, potentially off of there if you needed them in one bolt connector. I've used these in a bunch of different applications. Here is the last trick that I have for you guys. So when you make your polarized connectors, obviously you know in the wing where those things are gonna connect. Now you have to make the other half of this polarized connector. When you clip it to there, you have to run them to the right ports on your receiver. So you don't screw these up, put them in alphabetical order in here, because it doesn't matter. You can make these in whatever way you want, but the leads then you would know which one is in which spot. A for aileron, all right, 
B, C, D, E, F for flap. So the middle one's flap. And G is for my gear. So aileron, flap, gear, all right in order. And then you can't mix things up. So those are tips. Those are tricks. Smash the uh, website. Go look at Hanson Hobbies for some uh, equipment to make your own servo leads and extensions and polarized connectors. It is super simple. It takes you a couple, you're going to mess up a couple learning, but give it five minutes. You guys will be golden. It's well worth the investment. Quit spending a, a million dollars on these. You can actually make better ones yourself. So if you liked it, like it, subscribe if you haven't done so already, hit the bell notification, make sure you select all to get any updates that we do or any videos that we put out. Hope you guys are getting out to the flying field. I appreciate you joining me. Um, take care. Peace out.